Uh, anyway, uh, let's close this show with some uh, Odell talk. Mm. There's a lot of things circulating. Maybe he gets traded. Who fucking knows? Yo, all over the back pages, you guys. I know newspapers are going out of style, but you know, I I read the, I see the newspaper every morning, so yeah. all over the back pages. Opening day, you got to read the newspaper for opening day. And he's still on the back pages. That's where you're getting your best coverage. I mean, football is king. That's why. <sighs> Which is crazy. Yeah. Nah, but like opening day is opening day, and for him to be on the back pages, he's just Odell. Like he's an enigma. He's He's like, yo, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be on these back pages, so no matter what, it's true. He's a Whether superstar. I'll tell you what, all, all the kids in my school got Odell hair. All of them. He got started the, that. Yeah, everyone has the that. Frosted they tips. They all got the the Mohawks, Actually, Nick started the frosted that. tips. <laughs> Nick had frosted tips. Back <laughs> in the that is yo, true. Not gonna lie, I wanted frosted tips as a kid, and my mom wouldn't let me do it. She's like, no. She did you a favor, dude. I don't know. I think I would have looked fire in frosted tips. <laughs> Very disagree. I used to have spiked hair, like spikes. Tim I do hair. remember that. Tim definitely thinks about this because he's bald now. So yeah, he's like, like, if yo, I, I, I frosted, frosted, frosted tips, tips one time, you know what I'm saying? I, I just pray for frosted tips every single day. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll take but, uh, it. Where were we? Oh, yeah. Odell, let me ask you guys a question. Let me pose you a question. Oh, God. Is, so Odell said he's going to hold out. Right. Right. Uh, you don't want to pay him that much money, Mm-mm. right? Especially because the Giants are, are don't have that luxury of paying <laughs> a cheap quarterback, right? Yeah. So here's here's the question, and 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 Danny's already rubbing his face because face palming, face palming. I might know what, how you feel about this, well, already, we but I'm going to present it back, anyway. If we pull the curtain so, back a little bit. We had about a 25 minute debate about this probably entire segment before right. we started recording. So, so that's why Danny's over there. I'm going to propose the question to you then. Cleveland Browns come a knocking, and they say, "Hey." We got a four. We got a 33. <laughs> What's good? Yeah, I'm doing it. Tell us why. Without a doubt. So he he's going into a contract year, right? So we don't know if we're going to have him after that. Right. If he came out and said, yo, I want to be a giant, I'll resign, and you'll have me for five years, I'll be a little hesitant. Which, to be fair, I before we start this conversation, whatever, I am under the assumption that he doesn't that he would rather play somewhere else. I don't know. I don't think he wants to play with Eli anymore, and Eli's going to play another two or three years. And does he want to just play with some random rookie? I don't know. I think he'd rather go to fucking L.A. You said he was on the back pages, and you were the one who told us before we started LA. this that he that said, was that was like I love L.A. I mean, he has a house out there. He lives out there. So it makes And they're sense. hot right now. Yeah. Why? I they're mean, also picking up every big name. Peter, Sleep, Sue, like we touched on earlier. So, Yo, if, if I'm the Rams, I'm going after it. What if the Rams offered like a one and a two this year and a one and a two next year? With, with without a doubt, but a those, one and a two this year and a one and a two last year, I think that's a no brainer. What about a one, two ones and a two? Two ones and a two, yeah. One next year, but those are two late round. Like if you gotta imagine that it's a twenty three or twenty five. But they year. also have the number two this year, so keep that in mind. Giants. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, but they're not getting the number two. No, but they have it. Right. But think about how many other scenarios could stem from that. Then the Giants could repackage those trades and move up and do other things with those picks too. That's why I think the four and thirty three is better. You don't got to repackage a thing. See, do you know what I'm? Do you know what I'm doing? If I'm the if I'm the Rams, I'm calling the Rams and I'm saying, "Hey, the I'll Giants, give you calling the Giants." No, if you're I'm the Rams, sorry, you're not the Rams, calling the Rams. I'm calling the Colts. Excuse me. Going, hey, Indy, we'll give you the, our first round pick. We'll give you our second round pick. We'll give you our third round pick. Give us the sixth pick. When they say okay to that, I'm calling the Giants and I'm saying I'll give you the sixth pick this year and our first round pick next year for Odell. And I think it's done. I think that's it's a done deal. I think both. I think all both. That's really. I uh, think all parties agree to that. So you you just brought a three team deal yeah. to the NFL. Yeah, but I think if that's that's what makes the most sense to me because. If Odell wants to go to LA, <laughs> Danny's having fucking if heart Odell, palpitations over there. Look, if Odell wants Danny's to go to sweating LA, right? over there right if now. If Odell wants to go to LA, that's the, he's he's not going there for a twenty. If the best thing you're getting back for Odell is a twenty third pick, you lose the trade. Period. Yeah, I that's agree. it. It doesn't. It doesn't. You lose the trade. Your trade. The trade is lost. Yeah. So it doesn't matter how many picks you get in the future because they're gonna be good. That pick next year could, for whatever you know, be the twenty, be the thirty second pick. Yeah. You know because they might win the world, uh, the World Series. They might win the Super Bowl. They might win the World Series, too. That's how fucking good they are right now. (laughs) And if they got Odell, they're going to be even better. So you got to package something to move up and get that sixth pick somehow because that's the pick that everyone's going to want. And if that pick is in the trade, then if you're the Giants, you're like, okay, now we got to listen. Is it really the pick everyone wants when if 4-33 and is on the board? Well, you got to – all right, so for the Browns – Hypothetically, this is all hypothetical. The Browns have Landry, right? 
The Browns need an identity. He would bring that. The Browns also have the wide receiver coach. That was his wide receiver coach at LSU. Not a coincidence. Mm -hmm. So the Browns look like they may be positioning to get that. But if you're the Browns and you already have wide receivers, are you coming to get a wide receiver that you're going to have to pay $15 million a year to? It's not 15. If it was 15, it wouldn't be an issue. If it was $15 million that he wanted, it wouldn't be an issue. He'd be signed already. Okay, 20. He wants to be the most expensive player in the league, and you're not when you're a wide receiver. There's not. That's not going to happen. Let's be real. That's not going to happen. But Think about the last wide receiver that was top five in his position that has won a Super Bowl. You got to go a long way back. I'm thinking like Marvin Harrison. That far? I'm, I'm, I'm he, was on, he was on, the, ba- he was on a, the back a, nine a, by then. A clear top five without a doubt wide receiver. Reggie Wayne was almost the man at that point. That has mm-hmm. that has won a Super Bowl. Seattle didn't have one. The Patriots have never had <laughs> they one. They barely had Ran- one. <laughs> when you say won a Super Bowl. Won a Super what Bowl. about Randy? They didn't win a Super Bowl. That's they also the right. Giants. Because there's been a lot of teams that have had really good Wide receivers that lost in the Super Bowl or Julio, lost on the way to the Super Bowl. Julio course. lost in the Super Bowl. This Recency. entire situation is so hypocritical of me because I'm all for trading a draft pick for a proven commodity, which Odell is. Right. You know what you're getting with Odell. Which is so against the Nick rules. Nick's yeah, all about what, proven players. For... Like, I would give up a draft pick for something that I know oh, yeah, for yeah. certain every every single no, day of the week. But we've talked about you're all about trading the 4 33 if that was on the table for Odell. Have yeah. you not? Said and, and if we were the Browns. If, no, no. If Nick no, no. was the Giant. The Giants, yeah, because oh, yeah. Well, know. I'm saying like either way, though. I feel like if you were the Browns, too, you'd be like, yeah, I'd trade with 4 to 33 for Odell. That's, that's, a lot. that's another thing. Do the Browns want to do that? Yo, yeah. we, also, we also need to show love to Odell because this guy is, he's done more in his first four years than any wide receiver has ever done. Mind you, his rookie year, he missed four games. And then he got suspended one game. The 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 Josh Norman Incidents, the year yeah, the yeah. year after last year he missed twelve games. So he's missed about a season's worth, and he's already the most pro- productive wide receiver in a four year stretch. The Giants trading him, he might be the Jerry Rice of this generation. He is a a generational talent. He I, I tweeted out he is the best offensive player the Giants have ever had. I was telling Dylan when they first got him, we don't deserve him. We've never had a guy like that. Right. Right. With all that being said, for what he's asking, the fact that Eli Manning is 37 years old, and it would have been nice if we would have saw Davis Webb for a game, game and a half, to see what we got. Because right now we're just seeing him throw to Evan Ingram. In a way, we did see what we what we got. If you put Geno Smith in there over Davis Webb, we see what we got. We that, got nothing. Yeah, same yeah. thing with Hackenberg. Like everyone's like, yeah, see what he got. <laughs> yeah, the fact that he's not your backup quarterback and Geno Smith is tells you, I think, everything you need to know about Davis Webb. Right? That's true. I guess. But that, it, that. It, that was only year one of Davis Webb to be, you know. Sure, but in a lost season, I want to see you. If you're a Jeff fan in a lost season, I want to see Hackenberg. So let me ask you a question, Nick, then. So now you have a situation where let's say you do trade Odell for the two and the four, right? What are you doing? No, are we you have no, four in the thirty-three. Four in the thirty-three. Okay, you trade Odell. Let me rephrase that. You trade Odell. Now you have the two and the four. So what are you going to do? Are you taking like a quarterback and then Barkley? Are you taking what, what's what's the plan? What what do you think is you'd be you'd be able to get the quarterback in Barkley? Yo, is Chubb in play with the departure of JPP? I wouldn't want him at two. I think Chubb's in play, hundred percent. Two and four. I think Chubb's. Gotta I don't be in play. think so. I, I don't think quarterback and Chubb is a bad play if you get two and four. I really don't think the Giants are taking a quarterback. I might be in the minority here, I, but I don't I, think I'm, they're taking I'm, one. I'm with you. The mock draft that I put out last week was ideally what I think hope and hope should happen when yeah. it comes to the Giants. Right? Because we were having this argument. Barkley, he might be nice for five, six years because that's just the nature of the beast of being a running back in the NFL. Eventually... You just yo, Le'Veon Bell has fifteen hundred carries in four years. That's wow. a lot. A touches, I'm sorry, because he catches mad balls out the right. backfield and shit. A running back, their their shelf life to be effective and productive, it's small. Where I could take a quarterback and I can have fifteen years, I think that's a no brainer. And also this is a franchise that doesn't pick this high. Last time they did it was Eli. I think you have to take advantage of that. But this is also a league where you could draft a quarterback at 12, at 16, and and still have an effective player. Yo, but if... So the Giants were out, right? They let JPP go, but they bought a Nate Solder. 
So they're still planning on winning next year. Yeah. Can they win without yeah, they Odell? And, and their de- and their defensive their defensive stars are all being paid. Right, right. Vernon, Vernon, uh, Vernon, snacks. Uh, Olivier Vernon, Jenkins, Jenkins. They, they yeah, all went out and got these guys less than two, yeah. year, two years ago. Ogletree's making six million dollars. Ogletree, they traded for. So it. you got you got to figure out if the Giants are. I'm just saying. So so do you need Odell to win? Because uh, that's what I was going to say. Like Marshall if, if is hypothetically on the cusp, you know, of getting cut. And then Sterling Shepard is, is a slot guy. He, who, if you trade, if you get rid of Odell, who's lining up out wide for you? You need you need Odell to win. If My thing is though, you can get a wide receiver. There's a but can you get him in this one one year window or two year window that you have Eli for the rest of his career? I, I, also, another thing, like you you mentioned, shelf life. <laughs> yes, running backs have short shelf lives, but if you are Trading Odell for the fourth pick in order to position yourself to get Saquon Barkley, who is the highest graded running back since uh, since uh, Adrian Peterson, Adrian Peterson, even yeah. higher than Zeke. Yeah. Right. So if you're trading that, the shelf life of Odell at this point in his career is about the same as the shelf life at, of Saquon. So you're trading one for one, basically, and you're positioning yourself to get the quarterback of the future plus a playmaker to take Odell's place. The- now, go ahead. The argument that the Giants need Odell to win, I think, is false. Because with Odell, they're twenty-one and twenty-six. Without him, they're five and twelve. Are they more productive offensively? Yeah, absolutely. But the wide but, receiver just doesn't translate to wins. But without him, they're five and twelve. You said. Yeah, but they're they're still below five hundred. Both scenarios. Yeah, but if you get rid of him this year, what what do you, what is Easy E throwing? Also, to the entire wide receiving core went down this year. Also, one year of that was eleven and five. Sure. Yeah. They also had. Spent two hundred million dollars in the off season on the defense. Man, there's no problem with that. Which is still intact, right? Yeah, right. So but what if you get rid of Odell now? That eleven to five yeah, and, is kind and of calling its question. And now you also have better pieces offensively than you did prior to that. Evan Ingram, is, a lot of people are high tight on. end. You have a you have a guy in Sterling Shepard. He's not a number one. He's a slot guy, sure. But you have two weapons that you can you can work with. What if the Bills offer their two first round picks? <clears throat> What are their picks? 14 and somewhere in the 20s. Uh, I don't think the Bills do that. I mean, hypothetically, go ahead, but like they just signed McCarron, and I think that they're going with McCarron. Yeah. I don't think they really need OBJ. I don't, I don't know I, how I, you could be offered first-round picks for a wide receiver, two of them, and not give it up. I think it's crazy. I think the only position I'm trading a first-round pick Yeah, OBJ is a generational-type talent. He's sure. proved that so far with for his sure. numbers through, through and, four years. And I'm going to look foolish when, when he so gets traded. But so is Julio Jones. And he lights it up. But he's he's a generation ahead of him. He's the AB generation. But I'm just he's saying. He's like four like, years older than him. But I'm saying, like, I don't know. I'm, like, so on the fence about it. Like, I want to keep Odell just because, like, I'm a Giants fan. You want to see Odell, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, like, I'm all about the longevity of the team and whatever. I don't know. It's very hard to be like, yo, let's trade this guy. Because, like, he's fucking nasty and just ridiculous. Yo, I mean, we've seen the shit that he does. From a financial standpoint, also, if you're looking at it as the Giants and your team is going to be 4-12 and 12 again, which I'm not very high on the Giants going into next year. If he plays 16 games, you know that you're going to be selling out. Yeah, you're chilling. Wait, that you're so gonna you think have. the Everyone's Giants gonna be should be four and 12 with a returning roster and the second round, second overall pick? Not four and 12, but I don't. I still don't think that they're a playoff team next year. The entire division is better. I think if they keep Odell at Saquon, they're a playoff team. I really do. I really think that that's the case. I think if they if they add a playmaker, I think they're pushing Philly for not for first. I, I, I think they're pushing Philly for first place. No, yeah, I Philly agree. got so much. No, better. no. If, Tim, if Tim's hypothetical if comes my, to fruition, if, if OBJ plays and Saquon is drafted, all of a sudden you're going to see a, that's a win brand, move. brand new Giants offense, brand spanking. And if that defense can recover, because that defense is going to have to recover, because they did not have a good year last year. A lot of that came from the offensive efficiencies. They were on the field like crazy, inefficiencies. Excuse me. And the coach, the co- yeah, the co- uh, the whole situation with the Giants last year was murky, but. You take you take Saquon now and you give him a whole new level of on defense where you have to maybe draw in those safeties on some play actions where you have another guy to make plays uh, that are longer than twelve yards outside of Odell on a slant. You know it's going to be not, that adding that extra piece. All of a sudden the Giants are contenders. But also at the same time, does that make them good enough to win? Because if you can't win, then don't take Barkley. I think because pos- you're passing up on a quarterback. Yo, possibly it could make them. Good to win next year. I don't think so, dude. I you think, think so. Barkley makes them? Is the difference? They also went out and got if, Nick if Solder. He's as, if he's as so good, what? if he's as good as they say, yes. 
So you think the that difference? if the Giants got Barkley, yes, they're, they're a, a Super Bowl team? How it, can you say so what to, to Nate Solder when he's the best left tackle on the market? But, but yeah, how is that so what? Yeah, but hold on. on. But how can uh, you, maybe how not can a Super Bowl? How can you make them a Super Bowl? You make them a Super Bowl winner? No, no, a playoff even, team who can make a run team. as a wild card team or a division right. winner. Right, and then once you're in, anyone has a chance. Here's my thing: you have three years of Eli, and then no one. So do you take a quarterback or do you take this kid right. and hope to God it pans that's out this the, year? That's the win now mentality. He's going to say, "Quan, which yo, is what he's saying." You're this still what hoping saying. to God that a quarterback makes it this year. You're still hoping. There's no. There's no yes, less but hoping. You, to but God. at least you put your a team in a position where, like, we're trying to make sure that we're good for the next 15 years. Not taking this dude. We're good for five years, and we're trying to win today when we just fucking sucked dick. Well, it's a different. That's a different. A lot of injuries. When, a lot of injuries. And you, there's a lot. Of, you also have an entire defense, like Nick said, making so much money, and these guys are gonna run out of money. So what are you gonna do? Are you gonna spend your second round pick where you can get one of the most talented players in a generation, and add that to your offense? Are you gonna waste that on a guy that's gonna be sitting on the bench the entire season? Second overall when, pick. Second that's overall right. pick. When you when you see the rest of the roster is kind of win now. So you have an entire win now roster, but you're gonna draft for the future. Doesn't make much sense to me, especially in a league where you are, you can play a rookie quarterback. It's it's not only like looked on with positive feelings; it's the norm. Yeah. It, now, if you don't start as a rookie, you're looked at. Yeah. Yo, Were you the wrong pick? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. What's good with Mitch Trubisky? Everyone. All right. What's good so with him? Can he I give a start. counter to that? Can I give a counter to that? The Packers did this, right? They were in a win now mode. They had Favre. That team was loaded. They were just in the. Uh, they, they had made a deep playoff run. They were in the NFC Championship game the year before. I think they had lost to the Falcons in the playoffs. Um, not in the NFC Championship game, but they were in the playoffs. Then they drafted Aaron Rodgers. He sits behind them. And then uh, from there... A little bit of a different issue. They drafted Rodgers in the 20s. 24, I believe, is, was his draft position. You're not talking about drafting number two overall here. Sure, but the the discussion was that he should have been the first-round pick. Yeah. He, he should have been first the overall first pick. overall pick. Yeah. He was a Cali kid. San Francisco had the pick. That's why there's always that debate about Alex Smith and, and Rodgers. What could have happened if Rodgers would have went there? He grew up a Niner fan, too. It was like a layup for you to take a layup bar. It's been a while, <laughs> right? So with Rosen or Darnold or whoever falls there, I, I personally, I think Rosen is going to be the best of the bunch. That's why I'm so convinced on him. And I think I've had a pretty good track record on quarterbacks coming out. I've been high on a few guys, and they've panned yeah, out. My quarterback track record is... Beyond terrible. You know, you know who I was a big fan of? Tyler Bray. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember Tennessee. that. Tennessee. Yeah. Yo, first of all, I have a tweet. Also, I like Brandon Whedon. I think he's going to do good things. Yo, Tyler yeah. Bray is still on the Chiefs, though. So he's still in the league. You know what I'm saying? Still yeah, he's getting around. his second, second team right Sticking around, sticking there. around. Like, my worst take was, like, I love Derek Carr coming out. I like Mariota. Loved Andrew Luck. I mean, everyone knows that. Bortles was, like, my bad, you know, black eye. Everyone has that. Everyone has a rough night on the town. AFC Championship quarterbacks, all I'm saying. I, I just think that if you're the Giants and to set them up for the future long term. Also, can we address the elephant in the room, too? And I'm a big Eli apologist. Eli hasn't been playing that well either. Well, that's the thing. This pick is tells you. Is he a Super Bowl you, quarterback? But that, that's what this pick tells you. He is. When it comes April or May, you know, draft. When it comes draft day, are the Giants playing for now? That pick will tell you. Or are we playing for the future with a quarterback? Mm -hmm. That's a good point. And Ode the, the Odell situation that's what that is going to tell you. too. Right? And, and, and you know what it is? Depending on who they pick, it could fit for both. Right? They draft Quinton Nelson at two. You're playing for now and the future. Because this dude's coming in right away. And I think he's Zach Martin. Yeah, but I also don't think you take him at two. No, you don't. Not after you sign a Solder, you're not taking him at two. But you do have a hole to fill. You lose Richburg and you lose Pew. Mm, true. Pew, yeah, Pew, Arizona. Shout out to Q. Is he gone? That's my guy. That could know. that could be the pick. That Good riddance. I, by I the also way, want, think want just because you $10 have million dollars a year. I also think just because you have a loaded team doesn't mean that you can't be realistic and be like, you know what, we're not a Super Bowl team. Yeah. I think that you have to be realistic and think like, okay, did it just not work out? Did we just fuck this up? Did we do whatever? Like, and, and just. Plan for that because if we're not going to win in the next two years, or th or whatever, since uh, when Eli's behind there, then like if no one's got faith in Eli, if Eli has another shit year, now you lose out on the quarterback, and we draft Barkley, who's back there. Who the fuck's throwing the ball now? Yeah. Who, the, who only God knows who's throwing the ball. And look, Eli, Eli, 
you could defend them. The offensive line has been really bad. Yeah. A lot of wide receivers have dropped a lot of passes. Since 2011, him and Matt Ryan are one and two in drop passes for, for from wide receivers. But still, he also hasn't been playing well. And he's he's shot. When you're looking around the league and Breeze and Brady are still lighting it up and they're two, three years older than him, and he looks like he's a shot fighter, as I've said many times, it's it's very concerning. But you also got to think about, like, how much is that on Eli? Like, how much of it is Eli can't play anymore? And how much of it is, the, first of all, the Giants have no running game, haven't had a running game in the entire Eli Manning era, right? They also have no offensive line. We had Eric, one. No, they, they, the Super Bowl year, we had a good running game. I, yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a top running game. My Bradshaw. You had a, like like Brent and Jacobs you had a solid one. And Derek Ward, Earthward and Fire. Was Might not be the household names, but they were solid. Yeah, uh, yeah all right. solid. When I say didn't have a running game, I mean like a superstar yeah, runner. Yeah, of like, course. Yeah, but there's a lot of teams, though, that don't have superstar running backs. All right, fine. They had a running game once 10 years ago. Okay? You happy? Yeah. All right. So they had a running game once 10 years ago. All right? They don't definitely don't have one now. Orleans Dark was not tickling my pickle. All right? And then you got... And then you have offensive line issues. You have Odell Beckham who's out. And it's just Eli behind a bad line with no running game throwing a Sterling Shepard. That's not a recipe for success. No. So how much of it is Eli? That's I, a, that's I, a, it's a hard question. I think he's he's at fault too. He's not he's I don't not think I don't think of, by any means I really even with Barkley I I don't even see them sniffing a Super Bowl. Are you kidding me? I'm not, not. No one's it, talking Super Bowl. Me a playoff I run. said that. No, but he's talking about like. I'm talking about a playoff. I'm run. talking about they could get in the playoffs and make noise. I agree. I don't know. I think they can make. noise I don't in see the why not no with problem. that defense. They picked up Ogletree, who's Tim's not hot on, but I am. They I got mean, Olivier Vernon. They got snacks I'm, on the line, stopping the run. Also, even if I'm not hot on him, he's still an upgrade. Right. With the with the Giants linebacker core, like regardless of if he's a superstar or not, he's an upgrade. So they, they're upgrading. They addressed linebacker. They 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 addressed the old line with Nate Solder. They can yeah, address know, anything we, they you want. Also with lose, the number two you also lose. You also lose JPP, and our secondary was what last year. George Jenkins was hurt last year. Sure, and Eli Apple. I don't even like. I don't even know what the fuck is going on with that guy. Does he even want to play football? I don't know. <laughs> so if you're so if you are building towards the future and you do plan to take a quarterback with that number two pick, then taking the four and the thirty three is an absolute no brainer for Odell. Agreed. It, that, it's, but only it's, for it's all the about it's all about what you're planning for. Do you want to plan for the future? Because if we're planning for the future, we got a lot of shit to to, uh, to address here. Right. And if you're taking a quarterback number two, and you're not trading OBJ, you're dumb. Not, just, not good. Not good management of the roster. Just straight up, not good management of the roster. I just the only thing I don't want to happen is we pay OBJ because again, I don't want to see him go. It would suck and like whatever. Would be Can't bad. watch that guy score touchdowns. I'm so, the, the I'm so are, on the fence about it. So am I. But I, here's the thing: I wouldn't want to 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 watch him walk away. and You get nothing out of that. That's, That's what I'm. That's saying gonna too. fuck us forever. That's what I'm saying too. That would screw us. Look, this dude is also what 24, 25 years old. So he's still young. God, that sucks. Right. And if you draft, here's the thing: fuck. if if they draft Rosen or they draft Arnold, whoever, right. Then you would have the luxury of paying Odell what he wants for three, four years. Right. Because then you become the L.A. Rams. You become the Philadelphia Eagles where you have a franchise QB. You're not paying them any money. Then you could do the deal. I'll, it's what I told you in the past. I'll give oh, the T.Y. Hilton makes $14 million a year. It's dope when Andrew Luck is his quarterback because he could grow with Andrew Luck. You know that T.Y. Hilton's going to be in his prime and Andrew Luck's going to be in his prime. I'm not giving Odell this money when I don't know what's. How much longer I have of Eli when now it's not even good. And I don't know what's behind him. That's a lot. Yo, a wide receiver does not win Super Bowls, in my opinion. Don't. I agree. I, I agree watched too. I watched the Seahawks. Yo, it's crazy. Like I, at this stage in the NFL, it's like a DB is almost worth paying more than a than a wide receiver. Yeah, because it's a passing league. You also won't you That's what I'm saying, like you guys shut down corner covered. is almost worth paying more than it is locking down that with that wires that Odell for four or five years. My whole life.